good morning welcome good morning sir uh, good evening good evening sir good evening good evening, evening. Good, good, evening. evening good evening dr soni hello namaskar sir namaskar kaise hain sir good evening sir indramani good evening sir yeah sir good, good evening morning. sir uh, how are you pius namaste sir sir very namaste, good namaste pius apne bhi gaadi wala usme aa gaye aap bhi hai सर जस्ट फॉर ए चेंज देखिए सर थोड़ा सा कुछ अब वेट तो गेन नहीं हो पा रहा है तो सोच रहे कि सर थोड़ा ऐसे ही जस्ट टू टू चेंज ओवर दर्सनैलिटी आजकल ये तो काफी जनरल ट्रेंड हो गया है ना वैसे भी सर अभी तो वो बड़ा वाला हो रहा है तो वो तो परमिशन नहीं रहता ये सर सर डॉक्टर सैयद से तो पहली बार मिल रहे हैं आपका नाम बहुत सुना है सर इनफैक्ट आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू टू यू एंड प्रोफेसर सिंह एंड इंद्रमणि सर आप सब गुरु के गुरु के गुरुओं के सामने प्रेजेंट करने का अवसर मिल रहा है आई एम रियली इंडेप्टेड really indebted सर आई हैव बीन अटेंडिंग ऑल ऑल द सेशंस प्रीवियसली सर दे हैव बीन वेरी वेरी यूजफुल वेरी यूजफुल सर You are very young. Thank you, <laughs> uh, sir. Uh, okay, Mehta sir has also joined. Congratulations, yeah. sir. Thank you, thank you. How are you? Good, sir. Uh, keeping well uh, yeah. amidst the lockdown. I came there, but I you were not there in office on that day. I tried to meet oh. you. Oh, probably, sir. Uh, Yeah, I uh, came now in, in the next to... opportunity I will I will certainly not miss it out. Hope my audio is uh, is is all right. Uh, yeah, sir? yeah, very clear, very clear. Absolutely yeah. no problem. Okay, sir. Okay. <clears throat> no, sir. This has been uh, seriously. It, it's not just a routine compliment, sir, but uh, it is uh, uh, indeed. I mean, Dilshay, sir. Uh, this has been a very uh, it's meaningful sir it's a small step but uh, very impactful uh, yeah. there may be topics which which we may have forgotten and it's it's time to refresh and when uh, professor indramani and uh, of course uh, professor singh uh, yeah. uh, uh, contacted me and in, in fact it was really an, an honor for for me to uh, uh, join this this elite group and please don't worry indramani has plans it will be continuous uh, ongoing Uh, I think if we are plan he is planning lot actually after this you will know I think more okay, close sir. contact more close contact of ISAE and the various sir. activities will start I think uh, that's what he is planning he will sir start. now yeah. the so now the environment has also become very conducive for agriculture engineers from our fraternity first ever agriculture engineer has become the director professor V K Tiwari. so this is uh, indeed uh, you know perhaps the best time for agriculture engineers the golden period for agriculture engineers to come from the iit side from the iit system side okay thank you shall we start dr indramani yes please. okay i thank you friends for all we are meeting on the seventh day six great days are over and so we have 10 days total of training and lecture and the last day on 30th we will have one great session okay now i would like today program is uh, dr pius tony is associate professor uh, from iit kharagpur and he is going to talk on digital camera applications for a small farm holder which is actually something like a i think it's a very interesting topic because uh, If we, if the initial part of the big data, we are going to have it, because if we capture every big data content, camera information, whatever images, all this stuff, so this is probably a good uh, one for us to start with. Uh, in the meantime, I'll tell you after this lecture, we are going to have training. We are going to have you review of the whole thing like usual. We'll have probably ten minutes review of what you have done till now, because on the context of yesterday's uh, an example, what you have shown, uh, many things will come clear. what we have talked till now in the training session then we'll continue today we plan to continue the input output for the controllers yesterday we talked up to the controllers we told examples we are going to show that afterwards we have input output means that comes sensors all things so this will be more of a discussion on sensors and what will we have another three more 
we can give so we will end of the session we'll tell you we'll talk about protocols and things next three now i would ask uh, dr indramani to introduce the first speaker dr indramani friends first uh, singh and uh, friends this is a seventh successful day and uh, we have pu sony today from iit but more importantly another aitians uh, <laughs> professor uh, uh, pius uh, did his uh, btech from udaipur and after that masters and phd from ait bangkok and uh, he was faculty also uh, there but uh, he has been very much active in triple uh, a asian association of agricultural engineers uh, i had uh, you know opportunity to be in ait at the time of its foundation and the first conference which was held in 3 to 6 december 1990 and professor singh was at the amap affairs at that time so you uh, sir very nice to you know welcome you and he has been secretary general of triple uh, ae so we are using and you know, taking advantage of his experience for uh isae also he has been uh, honored with number of awards he is uh, he is a science direct top 25 top 25 publication in uh, terra mechanics and uh, he has been best paper awardee of isds conference ama uh, award there reddy award is there and number of and he has number of publications you know very promising faculty of uh, iit kharagpur and uh, when we were searching for uh, you know people who can share their thought and their experience for this webinar few say uh, your name came uh, you know <laughs> among the you know top few and that's how we have uh, start this study and uh, today you will be presenting uh, your application for small holder agriculture as you said that it has a distinct class based remote sensing and as our friend sayed mentioned that is the start of the big data so we would very much we are very much, you know enthusiastic to to listen you and now i did me start up so please thank you thank you sir thank you president bani for a very kind introduction in fact i feel much much embarrassed with these these trivial numbers and figures in front of you know these these satellite of gurus uh, uh, at least uh, you know at this moment i feel really honored and much privileged to uh, to be invited for uh, this uh, webinar which i as earlier mentioned that uh, and confess that uh, this is indeed a uh, uh, very uh, useful uh, uh, time uh, and, and and product so without Dr. further ado i will that is only one second you your your uh, comfortable with zoom can we share you you can computer or you are not comfortable yes, yes. we will you know it, it's all right sir it's okay. all right sir it's uh, all right setu uh, sorry setu can you please give him the uh, share screen is enabled share sharing is enabled oh, no. okay okay thank you yeah uh, please continue right uh, so uh, i i think vijay will be sharing the uh, presentation uh, no you can share that's what i asked right, just now whether you are comfortable operating uh, your computer you you run no, okay it, no problem either is no fine problem. either is fine sir no I, if you not let, done it before no if you not no, done i have before. done it but uh, since uh, vijay is already okay. having uh, better you you can do that sir from okay. from your end to, okay say to you must tell to start i will sir i will sir so uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, as a topic of my webinar today is the digital camera applications for small holder agriculture we have seen that the digital cameras they have dis we have very peculiar place uh, in the ground based remote sensing and uh, they are relatively inexpensive uh, and therefore they attract a considerable research interest uh, among the agriculture engineers uh, fraternity so in this uh, 30 minute uh, webinar which i consider it very challenging to uh, package uh, some of the interesting features together i will still try my best to reappraise the audience uh, of the capabilities 
as well as the limitations to be fair with the other platforms uh, of digital camera applications in agriculture. Next, please. Now to set the context, why there is such a human cry and what is the biggest relevance uh, we see for the smallholders uh, and why they are at the center stage. Uh, these uh, two figures are self-explanatory. Uh, you know, these are the uh, data which are taken from uh, the agriculture research data book, uh, which is uh, quite eye-opening that as high as 67% uh, uh, of, uh, of our number of operational land holdings are uh, of less than one hectare. So the marginal farms are said to be the bottom of the country's uh, agricultural pyramid. Uh, and the number of land holding which are of less than one hectare, they constitute more than two thirds uh, of the national uh, figure. And uh, the land holding pattern, it calls for a, a smaller mechanization solution. And uh, this is what I took uh, from the, one of the uh, presentations and, and speeches of Dr. K.K. Singh. And then uh, I, I also uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Dr. Dr. C. R. Mehta, who rightly said that you know emerging trends uh, is is going to be the cooperative ownership of uh, the model or custom hiring, where the use of high-end equipment is going to prevail, and the affordability of the equipment, uh, 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 affordability and the equipment size are going to be the key to the success of the Indian uh, agricultural mechanization. Next, please. I take this opportunity to uh, to uh, further on what Dr. Shibindu Ray uh, day before yesterday was very kindly mentioning that we have uh, satellite remote sensing and he has very clearly explained what are the uses uh, and uh, opportunities uh, lying with the space-based uh, uh, remote sensing platform. So let me go once again a little bit uh, uh, down on the altitude. From the space-based uh, systems, we have the satellites. We have uh, got special resolution, the special, special accuracy, and the surface coverages which are given in the, uh, the three columns which are mentioned here. Then we have the airplane uh, which are running at the higher altitude and the airplanes at the medium altitude which are having a medium surface coverage of about one kilometer of, of, of the range. Then within the airborne platforms, uh, these uh, are the helicopters and the hot air balloons, which have been tried upon uh, on a number of occasions uh, in, in the uh, US and Canadian system, which have got uh, almost the, uh, the surface coverage of one kilometer. Then at the bottom of uh, this uh, airborne platforms is a drone which has uh, drawn a considerable amount of uh, attraction in, in the recent year uh, among the researchers, which has got uh, 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 meter of the spatial resolution, which is fantastic. And, and, and I think this is uh, workable enough, uh, but it has got uh, the low uh, surface coverage. Now, there are some of the uh, challenges as well as the good things which are lying about uh, uh, these different platforms. Uh, could you please move to the next slide, please? Now, when it comes to choose the platform, the, the answer to this question is very difficult because it depends on a number of things. It is similar to of choosing a car. It should be an MPV or SUV or, or, or something else. So there are lots of criteria and I can group those important criteria into two parts. Well, what is the cost per square meter of using each of the platform? And what is the economic importance of the crop in question where we are going to, uh, going to uh, apply uh, one of these uh, selected platforms? Uh, the ease of operation, the skill requirement, and uh, the other factors, that basically the technical uh, factors and, and generic considerations, they still prevail. But these two factors, the cost and the economic importance of the crop in question, uh, I think they play a major role in answering this uh, question, which platform to suggest. The airplanes and the high altitude uh, operations, uh, you know, we have got uh, many free images, you know, they are coming from the space, uh, space uh, borne satellites and uh, they are providing us very clear and stable scenes. And uh, we can also have access to a good amount of historical data. So that is one of the benefits uh, for sure is about the satellites, uh, uh, satellite-based remote sensing. Then related to the drones, uh, 
the good thing about the drones is we can change the sensors. So any uh, low altitude remote sensing platform, uh, which is based on the drones, uh, we can change the uh, sensor type, we can change the camera type. So that is quite handy when it comes to uh, the uh, different types of sensors for us to use. But they have got certain downsides, including, you know, uh, I, I uh, list the flight time as the first one, because this has been uh, one of the severe limitations. Uh, the, the battery juice uh, drains very quickly and uh, probably, uh, you know, although their uh, surface coverage is, uh, is uh, low, uh, furthermore, it is uh, strained with the smaller uh, duration of the flight time. And the next in the line for the, uh, for the constraints of the drone applications, I see that it requires certification to fly. And uh, recently there have been uh, very clear uh, guidelines issued by the DGCA and they have categorized the drones and I'm, I'm sure that it, it is not uh, and it is no longer a matter of uh, uh, the kids play to use the drones and then try at their own. The unstable platform uh, which causes uh, blurred images this is uh, well I, I should say that this uh, has been uh, uh, one of the, the major constraints for the uses of drone uh, however this and the geographic distortion, these two uh, probably have been addressed in the recent uh, research advances to a certain extent. However, the first two, the flight time and the certification issues, they still uh, remain as one of the major bottlenecks for the uses of drones in agricultural operations. Then at the ground-based uh, sensors uh, or ground-based platforms, uh, we have got uh, you know, three very prominent uh, uh, options available to choose from. They include the cranes, tripod mount, and the handheld camera. Uh, before I talk about, or before I try to glorify the uh, camera-based solutions, let me first uh, accept and confess that there are lots of downsides related to the ground-based sensors, uh, which include uh, potentially the single uh, plant or uh, point-based reflectance uh, characteristics. And we, we, we should mind that these images are not the ready-to-use image. These are just the images which are carrying a certain information, but uh, unless it is processed to, uh, to an extent, it is uh, becoming useful. It takes a lot of uh, effort behind it. The second uh, downside of using this ground-based sen ground sensors, I feel that uh, the localized processing requirement of images uh, uh, is, is one of those important uh, ones. And uh, given the processing capacity, given the strength of internet available, uh, given the network coverage of, uh, of, the, uh, of uh, internet, uh, I, I, I personally see uh, this as one of the limitations. Now, since uh, the entire uh, um, uh, presentation is going to be based on the good sides of uh, using the camera, so let me uh, come, to, come to the business. And I see some of the good sides of uh, using uh, these ground-based ground-based platforms, which includes uh, the low cost uh, per square meter of uh, scene uh, captured. And they can be utilized uh, in the plantations, especially where there exists a very dense canopy and there are shaded trees. So uh, the uses of these cameras, cranes and tripods, they have uh, really an edge even over the drones and any other platform above the drones because from the drone, we can only see uh, the view of the canopy from the top, whereas uh, important characteristic information, uh, which could otherwise be taken from the camera and other uh, platforms uh, would be missing in, in those. So there I clearly see an important role uh, for camera-based or uh, a ground uh, platform uh, in, in, in this case. Then it is very flexible and we, as we understand, and it is uh, relatively easier uh, in, in, in terms of uh, its uh, complexity. We will see in later uh, part of my presentation that how easy uh, it would be for any one of us to just play around with that. So I think that this uh, has the potential to be qualified uh, to be suitable for smallholders. Although it is, not the, it is not the inference I would like to make from this presentation, but at least I would like to pose this as one of the potential uh, alternatives for smallholders. Next slide, please. Considering the plantations and uh, their peculiar uh, uh, constraints in uh, being recognized uh, from different uh, sensors, uh, we have uh, these four types of arrangement to be made. Uh, one is the isometric, the second one is the direct leaf measurement, 
The third one is the above canopy by using a pole or by, by a crane. And the last one is the above canopy where uh, UAVs or, or anything about UAVs uh, uh, can be very helpful. Next, please. The isometric ones, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, providing multi-purpose measurement. Uh, we can measure, for example, the diameter of the tree. We can, we can uh, estimate the plant height given that the uh, reference point or the reference height of the tripod or the crane is known to us, we can uh, find out the leaves, uh, uh, leaf angles, their canopy uh, width, etc. And uh, very clearly and, uh, 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 and uh, more, most interestingly, we can reconstruct the object in a three dimension, which can be uh, further utilized for, for various research. We can also find out the gap fraction the bottom two uh, figures, they show the gap fraction for, uh, obtained from the isometric arrangement of the ground-based uh, solution. And uh, the next figure is the gap fraction uh, from the uh, option C, which is above canopy. The second uh, type of arrangement we can make uh, with uh, these uh, camera-based ground, ground platform uh, is the direct leaf, where we are uh, uh, using uh, a particular an individual leaf uh, uh, for uh, uh, for observation, so it is providing us the highest uh, possible resolution among uh, these four, and uh, its uh, potential applications include any time uh, using an artificial light source. Whereas it has not been that easy for the rest of the three methods uh, to provide an artificial uh, uh, lighting source, uh, except for this direct leaf, which is very convenient, and uh, we can conduct the research from the underside of the leaf, which uh, otherwise, uh, is is very difficult. This system, however, has got some downsides of it, like the single plant or point reflectance characteristics, you know, which is uh, requiring also a localized processing of different images. So uh, this is all about the direct leaf uh, based arrangement. The third one is the above canopy by utilizing the pole. So where uh, the downside is the measurement interference uh, is happening because of uh, the background which is coming in, in, this, in the scene and uh, this background noise can be sometimes very tricky to be removed and it will certainly cause, uh, it, it will certainly cost us uh, in the reduction of uh, our accuracy. And the final one is the drone. Uh, of course, there are lots of good sides of using the drones, but I see uh, these two uh, uh, shortcomings, the accuracy which depends on the density of the shade trees and uh, a short uh, flight period. Next slide, please. Before I come to the camera, the digital cameras, which is uh, the focus of my webinar today, let us see what are the different options available in the commercial market. You know, they have been very popular and, and I must confess that uh, there is no uh, match of the accuracy at all uh, with the, uh, with the uh, RGB digital cameras. So, uh, so let, let us uh, put our free feet to the real ground and we, we tend to see that what are all those uh, best options available. You know, these are the uh, uh, Volvos, uh, if, you, if you like uh, the automobile uh, sector to, to, be, uh, to be analog fit. We have got the crops, uh, crops pack. Uh, they are using the uh, light source as the laser beam, and it costs about uh, roughly 20 to 25,000 US dollars. The next in the series is the Green Seeker, uh, which is from Trimble, uh, and uh, they have got the light source uh, as LED, and it costs uh, about 10 to 12,000 dollars for the mounted version, whereas uh, it should cost about five to six hundred dollars for the handheld version. Uh, the handheld version has been quite uh, uh, popularly used uh, uh, in, in different parts of uh, the world. The third one uh, in the library of uh, commercial product for uh, nitrogen-based estimation is the crop is, is, is from the crop circle. And very interestingly, they have uh, the light source of the modulated uh, uh, polychromatic LEDs, which is uh, very different uh, than the uh, all four. The last uh, in, in, in this uh, series is the uh, Yara N uh, uh, sensor, which is actually the active light source or, or ALS and they are using the xenon flash lamp as their light source and it, it costs about uh, uh, 20,000 US dollars. Next please. Now about the cameras. 
So uh, just a quick refresher of what exactly this camera is and uh, how it uh, uh, captures uh, the information in terms of the light. Uh, uh, I, 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 I am uh, uh, aware that uh, Dr. Said will be taking a full session on the, on the sensors. However, I, I take a detour and very quickly, I would like to tell that, uh, that you know, there is a red, green, and blue, which is uh, measured inside the cameras. And uh, incoming light, uh, the visible part of the light, uh, also the invisible part, which we'll be talking about later, uh, it passes through the IR blocking filter. Now this IR blocking filter is something to be remembered uh, that is going to be an interesting pe practical exercise if, if anybody would like to do. Uh, sorry, and sorry the, to interrupt, uh, Dr. Sloney. You yes. continue explaining about the cameras. I'm not going to explain. Okay, you explain about okay. cameras. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Said, for this input. input. So uh, the incoming light which is passed through the IR blocking filter. You know, this is the filter which actually blocks the infrared component. And infrared, if we have a little uh, understanding about the reflectance, uh, we would definitely relate it with the chlorophyll. As the biomass uh, gets produced with the, you know, as a result of photosynthesis, the chlorophyll is uh, the part of the, the leaves which actually absorbs the, visual, the uh, visible part of the, the spectrum and uh, uh, the infrared and uh, NIR uh, region is going to be, uh, going to be uh, reflected. And uh, this part is actually blocked. So the spectral signature is, uh, uh, is, uh, 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 is determined by the presence uh, and or absence of the NIR region uh, in the reflectance. So this is an important uh, filter which uh, we are going to remove actually later on. And there are color, color filters which control the uh, color light uh, which, is re which is reaching to the sensor. And uh, below down there is, uh, there, is, there is a main chip, there's a main sensor which includes the millions of uh, light sensors. And uh, uh, you know, this uh, sensor is of basically of two types, uh, you know, mainly of two types. One is a CCD and second one is the CMOS. Uh, most of the high definition cameras are fitted with the CMOS whereas the CCD or the charge coupled device based uh, this image sensor is quite uh, low cost and most of the webcams are uh, using this CCD. Now the photons which struck the sensor, they are converted into the electrical charges. Now these charges of pixels are read differently. If it is a CCD, then uh, these charges, they get uh, uh, accumulated at the corner of the array and uh, uh, finally, they are converted uh, using an analog to digital uh, conversion into uh, the voltage, which is actually the digital value. In, in, and in case of the CMOS sensors, uh, which, reach the, uh, with, uh, which reach these charges to the individual uh, uh, pixels, uh, 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 for, for, for example. Now, the next figure is about the traditional film, uh, and, uh, which is, you know, for one X3 sensor. For one X3 is a direct image sensor and it is developed by the For one INC, which is now known as the, the Sigma Corporation, which is one of the major breakthrough and uh, uh, path breaking research in the uh, color photography. Uh, so it uses the uh, array of uh, photosites that consist of the three vertically stacked photodiodes, uh, which are organized uh, in two dimensional uh, grid. So this is all about what is exactly viewing uh, the uh, information in terms of images, and it is stacked in uh, the three bands, if you are talking about the RGB digital camera as the red, green, and blue. Next, please. Next slide, please. Now, we have talked about the uh, consumer-grade cameras, you know, the, R the RGB simple digital cameras. The color band, uh, color band properties, which are obtained from the RGB data, uh, may not adequately uh, uh, assess the phenological properties of vegetation. The reason is very simple, because uh, most of the vegetative indices like NDVI, GNDVI, et cetera, well, well there are hundreds of that, I mean, even more than hundreds of those VI, they mostly include the NIR. So, uh, but what a consumer grade, grade camera does offer to us, uh, which can turn image into information. Now, let us uh, try to see a, a, a simple digital camera, which is, uh, you know, 200 to 1,200 nanometer sensitivity of its uh, photosensors, uh, probably a, a CCD base. 
And unlike the spectrometer and satellites and other multispectral cameras, only broadband based vegetative indices can be achieved from this camera. So this is a kind of uh, disappointing uh, uh, information about this camera, but these broadband uh, based uh, vegetative indices can still be used to assess uh, various uh, important features like chlorophyll, nitrogen, biomass, uh, pest and disease infestation and the yield. So, uh, and in addition, we can incorporate different uh, sensors uh, in order to uh, uh, augment and enhance the capabilities of these consumer uh, grade information. But at the same time, there are some basic image properties which are stored in the JPEG format. And uh, we will try to make use of those basic properties, which are the RGB information. Now, this is, uh, this is very useful in assessing the color of the object. Obviously, this is all about the color. It also helps us in computing very basic indices, and these can be augmented and value added later on. So uh, we will we'll, uh, keep that uh, information in, in mind. And we can use uh, this RGB information for recognizing an uh, object or uh, uh, its, its signature. The next is the date and timestamp, which is very useful if we are trying to integrate different sensors. So uh, a common time is, is uh, required to uh, create mosaic uh, of information later on. And the next information, which is a kind of a default uh, available in, uh, in all these uh, image properties, which I'm mentioning about the JPEG image format, is the aperture or the, you know, some people call it as the f-stop. Uh, it can be used for the plant or fruit size determination, uh, the uh, plant height and diameter calculation, and the calculation of uh, exposure value. Now, particularly this f-stop, which is highly correlated with the distance between the camera and the object. A change in the focal length, uh, uh, which is uh, automatically taking place if we, if we have set the camera to the uh, automatic mode. So any change in the focal length at the constant imaging distance, we are believing that there is no relative uh, motion between the camera and the object. So the distance between camera and object is the same then this change in the focal length is going to change the image scale and the viewing angle. So there are lots of studies available which uh, use uh, linear discriminant analysis uh, classifier for ob object recognition. So this is an important information we can retrieve uh, from a very simple uh, digital RGB camera. Then we have the dimensions uh, about the uh, width and height of the, the, the pixel. We can talk about uh, the sum of pixels for the subject as well as the background. Uh, so this is uh, very useful information in, in that accord. Then we have the ISO speed and the exposure time. So these two, along with the S-stop, are going to be very handy for, uh, have very handy input uh, to uh, calculate the exposure value, which we are going to use uh, later on. Then uh, we have got the additional uh, optional information which we can supplement uh, with the help of other sensors. They will, provide, uh, they will be provided in terms of irradiance, genus positions, the degree of freedom, and the GPS. So these also can be uh, augmented later on. Next slide, please. Now, if you ever wonder that where is uh, this uh, uh, set of information is uh, stacked, uh, I'm using a Windows operating system, so uh, I, I, I took this uh, screenshot. So if you just right click on this uh, image, which is, uh, which is directly uh, taken probably in a raw format, uh, we will find the properties. And if you go to the details uh, tab, uh, we will see lots of information which I have just talked about, including the desktop, including the exposure time. And, and if you have utilized a DSLR, it will also talk about uh, uh, the uh, lens type and the lens setting. Next page. Next slide, please. Now, uh, these RGB digital cameras, they have been, uh, they have been uh, uh, constrained heavily with the varying daylight condition. So uh, in this research, we proposed, or we actually utilized a method to standardize the index values, which are obtained from uh, a digital uh, RGB camera uh, for, uh, for assessing the biophysical properties and the, uh, and the prevailing light conditions were, were changed. So these, uh, uh, these improvements actually improved the measurement accuracy. You see, by default, the consumer-grade digital camera, it provides the automatic white balance but each filter 
has, you know, I'm, I'm referring to these R, G, and D. So each filter has got different transmission characteristics in luminosity. So therefore, it is extremely important the modified cameras uh, uh, have to be uh, customized in terms of the white balance. So we utilize the exposure value, uh, which is a derived uh, variable from the given basic information I, I showed in the previous slide. Uh, we use the exposure value to adjust the digital number and the hue index. So uh, unlike the spectrometer, we, we can see that there is a spectrometer and there is a spectron, uh, which is perfect white uh, uh, surface. Uh, it is not uh, really convenient to all the time uh, white balance using the spectron in the case of uh, digital cameras. So we utilized uh, uh, a camera uh, having a configuration of the auto white balance, auto focus, auto exposure time, and this camera was of 20 megapixel resolution and uh, the recorded images were in the JPEG format. Next slide, please. So in this slide, I'm, I'm going to explain uh, the method we use for adjusting the digital number by factoring in the EV information. Now, uh, this camera, which is uh, providing us uh, as usual, the R, G, and B values is subjected to the varying light conditions. And uh, the hue index, uh, you know, there's a, uh, there's a long formula provided by the, uh, the Regon et al. in uh, 2016. So this is the hue index, the standard formula. Now, if we add the basic information, which we, which we retrieve from the camera JPEG information, which is the F uh, uh, stop, the exposure time, the ISO and the minimum ISO, uh, we, can, uh, we can find out the exposure value as you know, given as two log of two of the F minus, you know, this equation is, is over there. Where the min ISO is representing the minimum ISO setting of the camera. So basically we are taking the ISO to the minimum ISO as a relative measure. Now by utilizing uh, these information, the earlier obtained RGB is now modified with this, uh, I, I call it as a calibrated DN, mm. uh, respectively for RG and B and uh, multiplying with the factor of two raised to EV. And uh, if, if we ever wonder that, you know, what this uh, EV is uh, denoting, uh, we have got uh, the, the different digital numbers and uh, correspondingly, we will be using the relative light intensity. And, you know, this, this equation is given if, uh, you know, uh, by default, you know, these manufacturers, most of the camera manufacturers, they do not provide the gamma characteristics and they do not provide the gamma values. So uh, this equation comes very handy and uh, we can compute the CDN, or I call it as a calibrated or adjusted digital number as the alpha times RLI plus beta. And these the values of uh, uh, alpha and beta are provided by you know, this particular reference. Now, by using these adjusted values, uh, we can clearly see that the SPAD and uh, nitrogen uh, uh, calculated from the laboratory, the hue and the C hue, which is adjusted C hue, uh, we have uh, got an improvement in the, in the performance. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now, in other research, we tried to modify the cameras. Now, we uh, removed uh, the hot mirror. You know, if you'll recall in one of the sli earlier slides, I, I, I referred to a, uh, to a filter, you know, which is IR blocking filter. We really uh, uh, did surgically remove, remove it uh, uh, with the help of tweezers, and uh, we used this identical cameras. I, I use I use this Canon uh, XS 160. It is uh, fairly cheap, uh, you know, about seven thousand rupees or so. And uh, we used two different uh, types of external filters uh, in addition, uh, so which uh, made it as the uh, NIRR and NIRRE. One is the long pass filter. And in second setup, uh, we used uh, the red and uh, NIR uh, uh, dual, pa dual band pass filters. And these external filters costed us about, uh, you know, between 100 to $150 each. Now with, with the help of these external filters, what happened, which is, ex which is expressed in the uh, bottom left uh, uh, image, uh, which is, you know, from the Podal uh, and others uh, study, uh, the RG and B, including infrared, which is uh, falling on onto the image uh, to, to the camera uh, lens. Uh, now the red and NI, NIR pass filter is is there, so NIR is pass. Since we have already removed uh, the IR blockade uh, filter, 
Now these lights are coming to the uh, micro uh, filters of the R, G, and B. So what we get over here is the Z plus NIR, you know, part of the NIR. This is stored in the red channel. So the information which is uh, stored in, in the red channel is a digital number reading R plus NIR. Whereas the G and B channels are now uh, uh, are now representing the NIR part, the remainder of the NIR part. So the NDVI uh, equation, which is NIR minus R over plus of it, the standard equation, will be now modified for this modified camera use as the NDVI for this uh, CCD or for this camera as B plus G minus R uh, divided by R. Uh, well, there's a, there's a caution when we are modifying this uh, camera, it is, please remember that this is a one-way process and it should be done uh, absolutely in a dust-free and a dry environment and uh, mirrorless and DSLRs are really complicated and I would not uh, personally go for it. Uh, and webcams can also be done in the same way, uh, but it, it requires the magnification. Next slide, please. Now, these are the output uh, received from you know, three of the identical cameras. The red one is uh, the RGB simple camera you know, uh, without any modification, where the other two are having the long pass filter, the middle one, and the uh, dual pass filter at the right hand side one. The next one, please. Next slide, please. And here are the, are the results uh, from the NIR-R, which is the long pass filter, and the NIR-RE, which is uh, with the dual uh, uh, band pass filter. Uh, we were thrilled with the results, which are, uh, which, which are not that, that great, but not bad either. And uh, they are really encouraging uh, finding the R square of, uh, minimum R square of 70% uh, uh, or, or so in, in both the cases. Next slide, please. Uh, Next one, Dr. please. Sayed, uh, Dr. Sayed, yeah, how yeah. many minutes I may take more? Uh, there no, are two you, you take. Time. You take another three, three, three minutes, four minutes. Okay. You okay for Thank you. you. Okay. Yes, very much okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sayed. So uh, this is an, another study we we did with the uh, with the cameras. You see, now we have seen using the modified RGB cameras. Now let let me give an example of augmenting the RGB cameras with additional sensors. So we have got our simple digital uh, RGB camera and uh, we use the IMU for finding the degree of uh, uh, freedom and, 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 and the orientation. And we attest with the pyranometer and uh, a GPS module. Now all these things were attest to an Arduino. Uh, well, it, it can be anything uh, since uh, we are only triggering uh, an, an external shutter. So an Arduino was, was just fine. By the way, Arduino may not be uh, that handy for, uh, for streaming the video uh, uh, processing for that we might need to go for Raspberry Pi or above. Now these information were utilized to develop uh, uh, an integrated system for monitoring and managing the smallholder uh, coffee and cocoa, plant, uh, cocoa plantation. Now uh, a, a person would simply go on his motorbike and will uh, record uh, the uh, will record the images and uh, augment them with the additional uh, data and will update the information which is uh, which can be retrieved anytime with this uh, qr code but in this research we met with certain challenges uh, the number one challenge was that you know the assisted gps or the a gps uh, enabled mobile phones uh, uh, which were having the median error of about eight meter or so uh, so the ground truthing was uh, was uh, really a challenge then the next one is the internet connectivity continuity and the bandwidth next slide please Well, this is the second last slide. Uh, uh, so far we have seen the using the modified RGB cameras and then we saw how uh, uh, a, a digital camera can be aug augmented with the help of additional sensors. Now let us try to see uh, how the webcam can be used. So in the same way, uh, we uh, modified the webcam. Uh, this, this webcam was, uh, uh, was, was a quite, quite a uh, simple one. Uh, it is not the Logitech one, but uh, uh, it was, I, I, I forgot which uh, brand it was, but certainly not the Logitech. So we removed in the same way the uh, hot mirror uh, or the IR block it uh, filter. And we used uh, this setup, uh, since they were, they were quite cheap, so we used uh, four of those and we mounted on the spray boom, uh, which was having the resolution of one meter by one meter. And we used uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this, this boom spare at 1.2 uh, meter above the table 
and inside the greenhouse and you know these uh, bottom uh, four images show uh, the green color thresholding the a is uh, showing the plant growth stage uh, determination we use with the segmentation so the, the growth of plant can be um, can be modeled uh, either with the greenness or it can be also modeled with the leaf size so we can use both the shape as well as uh, the size at the same time the rgb information to deduce what is going to be the current growth stage of the plant the bottom two figures shows uh, the infect the infested area segmentation for the target uh, detection so here we use the gnd gndvi uh, which is the green normalized uh, differential uh, vegetation uh, in index so we use this gndvi uh, to segment the infested part you know which are shown in this yellow uh, uh, pixels and uh, that is where the amount uh, of uh, fertilizer as well as the uh, chemicals uh, they were varied with the help of you know simple uh, actuator based pumps or, or, or so so i will not go to much detail uh, at that point but you know we used uh, a matlab for processing these these images next slide please i request go uh, please one by one uh, so uh, before uh, i start with the I, i call it as a partial conclusions because you know the research is ongoing and we we still don't think that we can say uh, with uh, confidence that you know forget about the other sensors or other platforms and go and use the uh, the digital camera no this is certainly not the message which ever i would like to convey you know the uses of digital cameras in agriculture they can be explored uh, more Uh, potentially by using the information which is provided in the header of each image i have i have uh, shown a couple of examples where we could use a simple digital camera uh, to uh, to uh, modify the accuracy or to enhance the accuracy which otherwise would have been not 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 possible uh, plantations and the greenhouse application yes uh, the uh, digital rgb cameras they certainly have uh, a very uh, significant edge over any of these platforms so it is really not a question of or or versus uh, well needle is uh, useful at its own place and the sword is needed at the other place so with all due to, with all due regard to the other satellite based or uh, uh, or or different sensors i i would like to place the camera and uh, it its different versions in in this way that uh, uh, its selection is uh, uh, is based on for the researcher's mind is mainly based on a technical factor whereas when it comes to the farmers uh, uh, choice i think their selection is going to based on the economics either the economy of uh, these uh, products or the benefit which is uh, translated in terms of the economic benefit uh, uh, either of those the next please next please yeah so uh, there is a clearly a need for the lighter processing backend support lighter uh, so that it can actually support the uh, smart uh, phone so it should be smart smartphone friendly to turn the image into an information uh, until we get a nationwide free network coverage for agriculture as dr sayed was mentioning the other day i think we still need to depend on the smartphone so so here i would like to conclude uh, uh, my my uh, webinar and thank you all uh, for your kind attention thank you indeed so Thank you, Dr. Pius Doni. It's a very interesting topic. Personally, you took me to the golden days, my college days, when I purchased the Click Three and started learning photography. And those days, we were not knowing about gamma corrections. But later on, we come to know when the photography technologies improved. We learned about that. You brought uh, a topic which is uh, very hot today and very useful. i'll make a few comments on it before i open it to the other people to ask questions for example you talked about the application of arduino and raspberry pi which we are going to we are promoting people must learn you talked about gps a gps you want to find the location where the plant location we'll talk about now come to your camera usage many people may not have understood what is ndvi what is nir so for nir is near infrared he told already but don't worry about it the the concept those who don't understand this because many youngsters are there engineers they may not understand all this this opens your cameras local cameras of farmers can be used to identify for example what is the growth rate 
whether any pest infection has come or not, any pest. And plus, if I recall um, last uh, year in one of the CAST seminars, somebody talked about uh, augmented reality uh, and then virtual reality cameras. So the virtual reality, you see actually a plant with a, with a, uh, with a, with a camera and something like in your eyes. You can see exactly what is the disease it has got. We can forecast something like after 15 days of pest attack. So simply to say, a farmer can have a camera. Now today he's talking about digital camera. Probably your cell phones will have this type of camera in the future. So probably you can have the capacity the farmers can utilize very fast for, especially for finding out diseases and pest management. Now we already had a very good speaker who talked about remote sensing, Dr. S.S. Rai. Uh, that is about satellite image camera, also for the agriculture, we learned. Then we also learned from Dr. Manzul Azarika, who talked about drones to usage. Now we come to down to earth to the normal RGB camera. Actually, professionals, when you talk about the guys who are using uh, uh, like drones or this, they will say always RGB cannot be the best one, whatever it is. Yeah. But with the limitations, what you told, especially on nitrogen, you can find out, you can find the productivity, and I'm sure it's useful. Leave, shape as well as the color information is enough to produce much more information and help to the farmers to grow. And I think, uh, for example, as Erica told, you can use uh, uh, for the uh, drones, you can use even the normal Google Earth software that can give enough information. Probably the people who are listening can work on the camera to find out a lot of applications using the normal low cost camera. Thank you very much, Dr. Tony. And I would like to ask, uh, uh, any, yes, I'm seeing some questions. I'll put on the question. First, I see uh, uh, Dr. Murthy, please make a question short so I think he can reply. Hello, Dr. 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 Piyush Soni, how are you? Hi, uh, uh, very good. Uh, hi. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just had uh, one question. I mean, uh, how easy or difficult is it for us to take the uh, basically the approach that you are trying to do uh, and use it for regular smartphones, for example? Well, I will say yes. We have done it. We used uh, the Asus uh, Genphone, uh, which has got Genphone sensor. Uh, but I tell you that I, I utilized somebody else's camera, a smartphone, which was given to me for for play. And uh, I almost uh, broke it, but you know it is it is possible. Of course, I wasn't very successful personally doing that, but I got it done through uh, through external help. And you are very much right. The smartphones uh, can be modified uh, to uh, respond uh, to the near infrared. Uh, you know, part of the near infrared we call it as a red edge bend. The reason I ask about that Thanks. is uh, because I mean, uh, with the geo network and all that stuff, now we can okay. basically yeah, yeah, think yeah, of yeah. 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 We, we can we can make questions, sir. Next one, Dr. Narendra Shah has a question. Can you please, Dr. Narendra Shah, you raise your hand. He's not. Yeah. Can, can can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, so Piyush, uh, uh, I mean for the. Uh, want of time, I may uh, my, I may look a little blunt, but uh, you know uh, I think we need to go uh, one step further in the sense it is good to develop correlations between these RGBs, hues, colors, and you know because somehow I think in the technology uh, the small farmer should not get blurred. You know you you connected them through the technology and the small farmer. So if we can go one step further, we have every district in India there is a KVK. For example, if we can sort of, you know, uh, go ahead and connect and build and demo a model where how we can sort of, you touched a little bit based on cocoa and uh, a coffee farmer, but if we can sort of see that the delta value addition in the farmer's outgo has enhanced because of these correlations, I think it will be really good. But yes, the technology is good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, another question from Madhuri. Uh, you can talk now. You can disable your, enable your microphone and you can talk. Madhuri? Madhumati, next one. Next question is Madhumati. You can talk, your mic is enabled. You have to click, unmute your mic and you can speak. Okay. Next one, can you enable Bhaskar Gekwad? 
Yes. Uh, yeah, well, my, my question is, uh, there are several apps uh, called Bahikao, then uh, an expert from uh, Sierra Katak. They use smartphone. But the question is, um, there's no generalized algorithm which can characterize each and every mobile phone in the market and give the exact values back. So, uh, so probably that approach is uh, being misutilized. Second is, um, in the correlations between the modified RGB or RGB2 chlorophyll content. So my question to Dr. Sony is, uh, why it is not being compared with the actual NDVA? Because there's a difference between the reflectance spectroscopy and the transmission spectroscopy using the SPAD values. And again, the question is, most of yeah, the yeah. times- I think, I think, I think very, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Very highly <laughs> technical question. The audience will not, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, just last point to simple. put, sir. Yeah. Last yeah. point to put, uh, in majority of the nitrogen application recommendations, where in Indian conditions where farmers apply higher nitrogen, so the chlorophyll values saturate around 300 or so, beyond which these approaches fail. No, so, no, you, you, so, which means so you the want point to say, is, yeah, you the want point to say is, this particular te technique will fail. In certain fail. It will right? fail uh, for in Indian okay. conditions where excess okay. nitrogen is applied. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank That's you. A few Next. Silence, okay. Next. Okay. Yeah. Next right. question. We we have more people. Uh, Gauri. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Please. Yes. Sir, uh, can you uh, Gauri, Gauri tell me? Please. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. Is it audible? Yeah. Yeah, it's audible. Yeah, sir. Can you uh, tell me something about degree of freedom, sir? How to identify degree of freedom in cameras uh, in farm machinery applications? So some DOF point you have raised in that. How to identify the degree of freedom in camera? First question is this, sir. And okay. second one is, sir, what are the al alternatives in terms of farm machinery equipments for small scale farmers in terms of precision agriculture, sensor based farming? That I need to know, sir. Uh, is to no, sec question. second one is okay. not related to this particular camera. I would request uh, Sony, Sony to reply both yes, the questions, sir. the previous Can speaker's I? question and this question joined together, please. Okay. So I, I, I'll try to, uh, to, to summarize this way. You see, uh, in the paucity of time and what I presented today are not the, you know, they are just some of the examples. And I'm not going to exaggerate that, you know, this is the, uh, the, the total summary of the research. In fact, in my own department at IIT Kharagpur, uh, the, you know, senior professors have tried, uh, uh, you know, a lot about, uh, about these variable rate technologies and they have utilized the cameras for, for smart sprayers, for, uh, you know, for, for, for whatnot. And, you know, this technology has been applied in the precision farming uh, uh, to an extent that where we can, we can, we can proudly say that yes now it is a time for us to think uh, how to utilize you know these uh, uh, off the shelf uh, uh, results uh, to, to to the farm so uh, please don't uh, 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 mistake it this way that uh, this is the only research which i have done no no this is this a part of the you know uh, the tip of the iceberg and lot more has been done uh, within the institute and uh, you know at the different uh, uh, institutes in, in in the country as well now the degree of freedom uh, you know there are uh, a, a concept you know this which is uh, derived from the uh, from the mechanical engineering and perhaps uh, the the uh, you know this, this is why it is raising this this, this uh, uh, confusion but i'm i was referring to the degree of freedom the statistic degree of freedom if we are utilizing the three bands and uh, one of the bands is utilized as a function of the other two then we are losing the degree of freedom uh, uh, so I, I, I hope that I asked, I answered uh, that degree of freedom uh, query. And uh, uh, well, I, I think this is what I, I remember. Uh, so far, can, can you repeat the question oh. if it is not answered? Sir, it is clear. Think, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's thank clear. You, thank, sir. thank you. Thank, okay. Thank you, Tony. There is a question thank you. Uh, uh, from somebody that uh, how soil moisture can be deciphered using RGB. Can you use this camera to find soil moisture level? A short question. Uh, yeah, this is a very short question, but uh, the answer <laughs> of this question is is uh, is immense, and I think uh, uh, this it's, is one of the challenges, research challenges. You see, the soil moisture, the camera only sees the, the outer side of it. Uh, and, you know, the RGB I'm, I'm referring to it. Unless it penetrates, you know, there are images. Where one is the uh, the normal image which is taken from RGB camera, and one is X-ray. 
So unless there is an X-ray, we really can't uh, talk about what is happening uh, underneath, under underneath the, the top uh, uh, top top surface. So you know, it is it is really challenging. Uh, I mean, to put it uh, very bluntly. Thank you. I have, I'm taking from question and answers. So there are some questions. Uh, feasibility of this technology, where you can apply it. This is a question. Can you answer that? Where all you can apply in short form that anybody can understand, not necessarily a technical scientist. Yeah, uh, for, for for this, I will uh, make use. Of, well, uh, I, I will take the uh, conclusions which I drew that uh, uh, you know this is not the technology which I'm I'm uh, I'm daring to uh, refer for for all. You know, these are some of the benefits which come along with their own uh, own constraints. So uh, some of these methods which which I have uh, which I've tried to summarize, they are uh, uh, appearing to me that they are more useful for plantations and for greenhouse applications. Uh, whereas uh, the uh, application are uh, applications are much limited uh, when it comes to the open farm and when it comes to the you know the cereal crops uh, uh, where uh, you know the, the features are are totally different. So I, I'd like to to uh, summarize that you know these are for the plantation crops and for greenhouses uh, you know to, to the extent what I presented. But yes, uh, this is not the the end. This is not the uh, the entire envelope. There are lots of research has been done. Uh, which you know, they have used the RGB digital cameras uh, for the agricultural purposes. Thank you. Next question is somebody asked whether you need skilled labor for this. Uh, for removing the hot meter? No. But I would say that uh, if you don't uh, break your heart, uh, if you're 7,000 or 8,000 rupees, you know, this uh, this camera which I use was about $100, about, about 7,000 7, rupees or, or so. And I, I broke one camera, my my personal camera. And uh, then the second one, it, it got succeeded. That's why there were some cautionary uh, tips which I shared that uh, do not uh, open this uh, uh, under a dusty environment because you know it's a one-way process. You'll not be able to, uh, it's a destructive process. So you will not be able to put your hot mirror back. And I, I uh, shared that, you know please do not use the mirrorless camera. At least I will not dare to use because there the hot mirror is, uh, is, uh, is uh, present uh, much in a complex manner and re the, the physical removal is very tricky and, and difficult. So that's why I stuck to the CCD based uh, cameras. Okay, thank Dr. you. Say. One more question is very interesting question is, what type of uh, camera specifications you will recommend for fruit grading and sorting? It's a different application, processing, I mean, after harvesting. Oh, for for grading, I think uh, to, uh, being an engineer, the solution must be the simplest, as simplest as as, as yes. possible. So uh, I, I have seen uh, people have uh, tried even using two sticks to uh, grade uh, tomatoes and, uh, and and lemons. So of course it depends on uh, what are uh, the requirement, uh, what are the specifications needed. But I I think that the CCD cameras they have shown their potential uh, in 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 doing so because you know they are the shape and the uh, RGB reflectance uh, matters much. Okay. If uh, the grading has to be based on the sweetness, then I don't think that the NIR uh, is uh, yes. is going to be uh, that helpful. Uh, there are questions like, uh, can you use a camera for killing uh, robots weeding? Yes, of course you can. I think you have not worked on the robot weeding. Uh, no, uh, but in my department, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the professors have tried uh, uh, using uh, the, the cameras for for navigation and uh, for for all 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 these stuff. So uh, I'm I'm sure that this is this is doable, and and researchers have done it successfully. And people would like to have the documents for reference, everything. That I think, uh, Dr. Indramani, you will talk now, please. Dr. Indramani, please. No, uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Sony. Actually, I'm very much uh, pleased and encouraged. Uh, you know, with your talk, and uh, I just uh, the very the way you connected. You know, uh, I, I'm taking your last slide and the first slide. The last slide you said uh, comparison between needle and salt, and uh, you know, economy and uh, technicality. And the first slide was that uh, this digital camera technology and the smart holder, the smart holder. The kind of situation we are having in this country, I see future of this technology because. This green seeker technology, et cetera, even farmers level people have started using. So this big, big thing uh, probably will take time, you know, uh, to come, but uh, this kind of the kind of precision and level of precision we want in Indian agriculture, that also we have to understand. So I'm really very much happy uh, with uh, this stuff and uh, your uh, the work and uh, 
I feel that uh, it should be encouraged and at different centers also. And our uh, fellow researchers like uh, agronomists and soil scientists, they have started, you know, using uh, green seeker and art technology. Now engineering groups should augment their effort, you know, and uh, should join the science behind it and technology behind it because they are using just as a tool and toy. Many times they are not understanding the basic feature and how how we can add and, and uh, you know advancement to this technology. Probably the researchers uh, who are uh, engaged in this, uh, you know, should uh, take a note of it. And uh, I feel that uh, this one, one of the very good uh, talk and uh, very applicable also for Indian condition. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, sharing all your thought. And, and uh, you know, I, I feel that uh, others, uh, some other centers should also, you know, start working on these things where uh, full agriculture uh, being is there, like, uh, uh, you know, agriculture scientists are there. So together they can make uh, much, uh, you know, uh, advancement and uh, and ultimately they can take this technology for farmers' uh, use. Thank you very much. This is my brief comment. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I just want to add a little bit to Indramani, Dr. Indramani, what you told just now. Five years back, uh, I was in Nasik to see uh, some of the irrigation stuff. So there I saw the farmers are having, one farmer is having WhatsApp group. He was having three groups. So he told, we don't believe in universities and all giving advice. So we have our own group and he showed me the photograph. You see, this is what the grapes the problem in that he's asking our opinion. So we all of us do it. So why I want to mention this is this again, in one of the institute when I visited shortly afterwards, they were designing a website for farmers usage. And I mentioned them, you see the farmers are using WhatsApp already. There are three groups because the people are not enough. So I think, they're using the cameras of the same camera, mobile cameras. Only I think probably we scientists must look on how we can help them probably interpret. Thank you very much. With this comment, anybody, Dr. Anything want to comment now or uh, lastly or anybody else? Yeah, I think the camera photographs are uh, being used very much in insurance of the crop damage and especially in the disease uh, and pest uh, infestations. So. Uh, this has been for a long time, but I think with the advances in technology, you definitely help a, a small farmer. Because they don't have to wait for image and where to get it, okay? They take a picture with a smartphone and uh, send it to the agency and get their uh, claims. Yeah. And I'm very happy to see Pius again after some time. <laughs> pleasure is mine, sir. Uh, a pleasure is indeed mine, sir. Uh, thank you, friends. We'll go to the second part now, uh, which is the training. Actually, we found that most of the people stay for full time because they, at least more than 50% want training. And unfortunately, it's a very short time. We already told. We try our best for the next three lectures to give basic idea for you what all you must learn. So we go back again what we did in the last four lectures. Very quick, we'll go for five minutes to refresh and we'll connect it together. So this is what uh, we talked applications, what we are going to do is agriculture water pumps. And we're talking about greenhouse polyhouse and we come to integrated farming, how it can, we have to, we have to have the electronics and embedded electronics to come into picture. Then we thought we would have to talk about networking. There's a communication for the equipment, which everybody is uh, now talking about. Then we told what all required to cover. We went, I'll go fast because we covered most of them. We, we thought a lot of topics. First day we told, this all we are going to cover in this training program. Then we talked, the first topic we talked about electricity. What is electricity? We compared it with uh, uh, actually how there is generated. It's a movement of electrons we learned. Then we learned about how to compare it with our hydraulics. So easy to understand, it is permanent amperes. Then we came to Generation, why we had to worry, we had to learn about, because we are going to have photovoltaic generation in the farm slowly, and we are having a lot of solar pumps we have. Then we learned about what is uh, AC and uh, three phase and DC, we learned a little bit. And then we talked about uh, where we use uh, uh, the inverters, there's a BLDC motors and new technology what we have in drones we are using, for example. Then we talked about uh, when we talk about power and the electricity generation, we have to look at uh, what is the losses are there. So we talked about the losses. 
power factor and how the power factor runs through then we have to measure the power how much power is generated whatever it is like solar whatever may be ac power so how to measure it will not how to protect we learned about and lightning happening this yesterday dr siddu was talking about in the field when he last so this is where the protection must have been taken for the lightning then probably could have been solved then we talked about other protections electrical protection circuits which uh, normally we should know then we talk about tools again so what are the soldering and everything yesterday somebody asked about how fast you can manufacture this or how in a lab we can like i think dr murthy was asking so these are all the things stencil printer and pick and place you can buy at very affordable cost and you can have in your own laboratory to use it and these are all some equipments we require this all slides we will share afterwards so you will have an idea what you should know about it we come back to next one is very important is the basic electronics we learned what is a resistor is a fixed resistance inductor is a resistance will vary capacitor we talk about transformer then we talk about diode is a valve a simple unidirectional valve then we talk about uh, pressure relief valve this is zener diode so then we talked about the transistor a transistor is an amplifier okay it's a, an amplifier which is np and pnp we talked a little bit the gain is not linear in transistor then transistor used for example controlling motors all these things then we came to uh, a cr or a triac how the ac is ac motors are all controlled the speed control <clears throat> we came to linear amplifiers we used in the board of linear amplifiers also this operational amplifiers then we use a power supply switch mode power supply and normal power supply we learned then we talked about digital electronics that is a logic gate then we talked about latches flip flops to store the information then we talk about counters multiplexers multiplexers yesterday we saw also multiplexers demux d multiplexers then we talk about isolation transformer data to come from outside or uh, you have a different technique of isolation we talked about then analog to digital digital to analog conversions then you about voltage to frequency conversion frequency to voltage conversion this was the presentation then we talked about little bit about understanding what is a microcontroller how to select for example today sony told for this purpose arduino we use and this purpose i prefer for the data transmission and everything probably i should have used a raspberry pi so this is the knowledge i want the people to have so that is the level of uh, uh, understanding you should have or at least you will remember tomorrow raspberry pi arduino word from this particular program webinar we are having now this we learned yesterday also we talked about memory what is memory is there what is the communication required local communication for example i square c and spi and long distance communication you have like uart okay, we talked about what is important and then we talk about arduino is a small application 8 bit controller it can be used very cheap very easy to program then we talked about system on chip with wifi so yesterday we saw an application using this particular one then we talked a little bit about introduction of what why we have to use raspberry pi it is a bigger one it's a small computer inside for a agricultural application many applications Uh, RPA, uh, Raspberry Pi would be ideal. For example, Pali House and all. When you go, you don't require a PLC. You don't require to invest on a PLC. You can use a Raspberry Pi because it's easy for universities to learn. Manufacturing people will take different decisions. If I am going to manufacture, I will not use Raspberry Pi. That is not a problem. But for the institute for research students to learn, you can use Raspberry Pi. Now, yesterday we linked it with one of the examples. What he told, we made a a, a small. Uh, presentation yesterday how it is linked uh, with the sensor module as well as actuator where the exact components what we learned are being used here this board i want to show again because today what we are going to talk is going to be relating to this particular board so this is the system on chip which has got a memory which has got a local bus of i square c for example i square c is used to connect to the pressure Temperature, humidity sensor. 
So that interface is available here. This also can have a storage EEPROM. We can store counters, all those stuff. This is what a multiplexer to read from multiple sensors. For example, I got only one URT. I got four sensors. They are using URT. Then I have to multiplex them. So whatever is four, one, one, by, one by one, I have to scan and take the data and store it. So here is use multiplexer, for example. Here is using an operational amplifier, what we learned till now. Here is a relay. Relay, I told, relay can actually actuate something power. It can turn on a light. It can turn on a pump. This can turn on a pump. How big a pump? Five amperes pump, this particular one. But actually, in the application, what BISA used, they're not using. This relay will trigger another bigger relay. They already have an irrigation system. This will trigger another one. So we have to learn these components now today, we see. Here we saw a OLED display. This is a LCD display, what we call. This is, a, this is actually OLED, organic LED, what we have most of the uh, modern, uh, most expensive cell phones also have that. Otherwise, very expensive OLED. They actually, they don't have a backlit. There's no light coming from back. So each cell will still start lighting. Actually, light is generated from each one. So this advantage, why LED is a little bit expensive. It is not LED TV, it's different. We'll, we'll learn all these things in this session. So we started about process of schematic. We need a person, three, three levels we saw it. Once I have an idea, I want to do something like that. Then I have to put the, select the approximate component with a technical person and tell him, you design this component. This is a feature I want to have. This is a precautions you must take, okay? And he will design this. Then I have to catch uh, somebody to write Second part is a program for it. So this, this, uh, sorry, I'm not showing this. So, so second part, we actually, the first part is to make the PCBs like this, you have the PCB. Second one is to capture the guy and tell him, you have the right program so that this board will start functioning. For example, uh, this is another board. What we have, this is for cracking uh, the cedar, how much, See, is covering the area. This can go anywhere, uh, not only for. So this application to write, you have to get a GPS signal, you have to store it and transfer the data. This program must be written by somebody. This is the second. Third one is important is, this data I want online on cloud. So I have to need another programmer, or a person to decide what type of system I want on the cloud and which is better for me. So this is what we have to learn as a middle management to and what technology available in the cloud, what technology available. So yesterday we covered a little bit of the, I showed an example of Arduino for the middle level, which means the program to function for this. Here in this example, for example, I don't use an Arduino program. It's a C program of a embedded processor, very small processor we use here. The processor has only 32 kilobytes memory. That is the example here. Whereas the another, the actuator, as well as sensor node, which is used there. We are using actually a C++ C++ program using the ESP826, that is a system on chip. Now, we come back now, the other peripherals, input output device, this is today, input output, which are used. Now, the first one we see is a display. The one is LED. LED is a very easy, you can read in the night without any problem. So you must have seen the display. Next one is popular is dot matrix LCD. You have two lines, four lines, and you have so many characters, 20 characters, it can go to 40 characters. Then you have the graphic LCD display. So graphic, different types, different size, tapes are available, the cost. This will come probably the lowest cost, what you have the LED. So you must design any system what you're having, what type of display you want to give. So you must, you only you want, I want you to understand there are different options available to you to use it, that's all. You also have OLED, I told you organic LED, which actually comes from the cell itself when you start. There is no backlit. These are all the other ones, you need a light from the backlit. Like your TV, you have all of them, LED TVs have a backlit. The backlit is using LED, not the fluorescent light. That's what it's called LED TV, but they are not using OLED in the TV. So it's very prohibitively expensive. Like some of the cell phones, very few of them have high-ended 
they have this OLED. You have the moving display. These are all used in different purposes. Then we come to the second type of uh, interface that we have to understand is the input. We need some human interface. You have to physically input something, a switch. He has to press a switch. There are different types of toggle switch. We know already slider switch. And uh, read switch is uh, very important, is uh, very useful. Uh, it's actually a magnetic switch. So you can connect a magnet nearby, the switch will operate. So door is closing, door is opening, any of the activities you can use a read switch. You have the keypad, there are different types of keys, a matrix, way it works. When you press button, it will go automatically into the keypad. You have a latest technology of capacitive keypads also available, which uh, you can just touch with your finger. But you have to be careful with the capacitive type. If you wear gloves, thick gloves, they may not work. So capacitive is the one, for example, your, all your cell phones are having. That is a capacitive keypad. Capacitive keypad is only directly printed on the, on the PCB board itself, and a layer is given on the top. We come to the third type. You see, first we saw display. Second one, we saw keyboard input. Third one, we see output. Yeah. This output is interesting, relays. The relays are from microcontroller. You want to connect 220 volts motor. How will you connect? You connect 220 volts motor to the, here is the, for example, this is the AC. You put here, you connect the load here. And another two parts will go to the microcontroller where you have a transistor that will switch, which we learn transistor or something will switch this relay. So relay is like mechanical here. You see here, this is a DC coil. So 12 volts or something is given. It closes here and here these two are contact. Now this is contacted with a center point. This is a center point here going. Okay, this is a center point here. Going here, it's connected here. When this actuates, you give a signal, this will pull it, so this will connect with this. So your relay is used for this basically to control motors, pumps, whatever you have. You have a different size of relay. This is mechanical relay. This is very popular. And you see this is sugar cube we call. Don't use in agricultural purposes. Every hobby fellow will use this. Don't use in our application. Because problem, the construction of this particular relay is not, it's very noisy environment. It can give a lot of noise too. And in agriculture, we can't afford to take risks because it's unattended. And we require that. So the cost is not much. You use uh, another relay, which are not the sugar cube structure. It's a relay how it is construction inside. Those who are interested can go and read about it. But avoid using the sugar cube type of relays, uh, which are very cheap comparative to this one. So I would say price of this may be 10 rupees, 12 rupees. This may be 25, 30 rupees. So price is not much. But your designer will put a wrong one, this one, and you'll have a problem probably after six months or after maximum one year. So you don't use it. So this is a very important part when you design something which is work. Next one, you have a solid state relay, which is no non-mechanical, only using a track. You see, this is a track. And this is what we see is the optocoupler, which we already saw one of the components. You don't worry about it. So this is using only solid state. Solid state, what is the drawback? If any shorting is there, it will blow up immediately. So you have to be careful. With a mechanical relay, at least, it will last some more time. But with the solid state, it will immediately break up. So that you have to be a little bit careful on that. Now, second, uh, what, what we see next one is the another output type is LEDs. We know all LEDs. Uh, all of us use daily. It's very easy. And uh, you can use RGB as LEDs. Here comes the another device, what we require in agriculture, which is almost not available. Especially yesterday, Bisa, he told this, the hydraulic operated valves. You see, I'll tell you the agricultural, this type of valves you must have seen first, the broad set. It's a water, uh, it's a valve, solenoid valves used in uh, industry. Uh, it is used in uh, home appliances, wherever you can use automatic. They are used in washing machine also. So these are all valves, which ball wall or butterfly, whatever you want, configure it. It's electrically operated. You have motorized also. You can put a motor there. It will close and open a wall. These are all good. For agriculture, when we go two inch, the pipe size, the here the size is two inch and three inch size will be difficult. 
in drip irrigation the pressure is very high you cannot close and open a valve so these valves india even though people say they manufacture few of them i was really looking to find the prices and uh, there are the person available several people in india claim but to me it looks all are imported from china and without this the drip irrigation cost is very very prohibitive because of this and what it does is they use the incoming pressure there is a diaphragm actually incoming line pressure itself will actually lock close or open the valve that pressure you are using uh, it's it's like the what you call lever lever arm principle what you have gain so they use a the hydraulic gain the same pressure there is a small chamber inside very small chamber in that chamber when the water is allowed to go then it goes on the other opposite side and gives a pressure to operate this so closing and opening done by hydraulic pressure only actuating small chamber is done by electrical so this is possible but you cannot make a solenoid valve for 3 inch this is not, and current is very high so this particular one there are several designs this one and this one all of them you can use it so different construction technique they are costing for example 3 to 4000 rupees 5000 rupees some people sell for 8000 rupees depending on the size so if you look at a small uh, drip irrigation a farmer he, he will require about let us say one acre uh, i i assume he will have need at least seven eight could be reduced to six he needs that lateral he require main line you require so the starting from one and a half inch two inch and two and a half inch three inch you may require so when you, the total cost goes very high but the same can be probably i think this must be taken up by somebody research how to do it and probably the price can come down to somewhere about 1 to 2000 rupees probably this you also have a latch type which means you give us electrical signals short time then it will remain open and again a short time it will close this is excellent especially about one of the speakers was talking about power availability in the farm okay uh, it's a problem drip irrigation for example of course india is not a problem when i see uh, in the field irrigation it's not an issue because power comes in the night then only you can operate also but what he told talked about poly houses you are doing then you need a daytime also power so probably a latch solution you can operate it through battery also and battery get charged uh, when the power comes so this valves have to be prioritized it is similar to this i told yesterday about uh, soil moisture sensor which is also very critical Uh, for automation but beginning automation is we require for drip irrigation i tell you the reason why i emphasize is the important for scientists to work on a, a valve which is economically viable for example a ball valve which is used doing the same thing 2 inch valve is costing 80 90 rupees for a farmer manually to operate and flow when he goes for using this electronic electrical valve it costs him 8000 rupees 7000 rupees so you see the difference of pricing and so that is a problem most of the people cannot do automatic semi automatic irrigation so it is not efficient just imagine the problem what is creating now a banana farmer he is putting fertigation i asked once in a month some farmers some farmer once in 15 days once a week he is doing fertigation so i studied about what is the growth rate how much the production comes from the if you do fertigation daily or alternate days compared to you do fertigation once in 15 days it's about 30% 40% more you can find out the data you need a food daily like some other speaker was talking you need food daily so they cannot do this because night time they cannot go to each place and operate manually even they have to close the irrigation pipe they have to close and do the fertigation in the night so if you have the automatic solution this is the prime factor for the cost so i think the people who are listening anybody can work on it there are enough information available i will share with them we can work next one is output solenoid valve motors motors are also heavily used in agricultural application you will use a dc motor and dc generator for example the, uh, you want to use a, in the feeder uh, we made a track uh, tracker device the tracker device work for two days only but feeder you want to generate the power so you need a dynamo you need a generate from the mechanical system of feeder a dynamo to work and generate power so you can use it 24 hours day and night so we are looking for a small generator which was not available very very difficult to get because all of them break down so motors 
and generators for agriculture purpose we need see how are you going to measure rotor tiller i am telling a lot of examples to you a rotor tiller i want to measure the performance rotor tiller first of all of course i need information from tractor also but rotor tiller how many hours it has worked because the, the uh, whatever guarantee or warranty you are giving on the blades because how many hours it worked we require the rpm rotor tiller how fast it is working so then we have to adjust also the traveling speed forward traveling speed based on the rotor tiller rpm so it will not push neither it will pull so all these things we require electrical devices to be generated now we use again induction motors in pumps all the agriculture pumps use induction motor reverse motor and we know i i have sent people who has designed uh, in the institute who designed the pump starter this is the first one in in india happened for 10 years somebody starts giving you give sms it will start your pump from pune somebody started it's a very very good move because you, you need not walk for 10 km 5 km but unfortunately it took time now people are i, I met some people they are talking in like gujarat and all they are talking we buy from coimbatore because they the person shows me the app uh, this about a couple of months back where you can see the pump is running how many amperes it takes just imagine the farmer he is not an engineer how many amperes it takes and he says the one phase is missing uh, three phase we don't get one phase is missing so it will automatically stop or i have to interfere here and this overloading so it will stop and dry run i don't know i met afterwards so many our agriculture engineers many of them don't understand this i mean so i think we have to put these things into it the motor control is very easy but then we have to know uh, most of the uh, you know who are designed also only electronic people help agriculture engineers must this is very important for agriculture now coming back next one is the uh, bldc motors this control and design there are some people manufacturing in recently bldc motors last one year in india this is drones when you want to use robotics uh, especially i see lot of scope in indian robotics uh, especially for weeding weeding is a big challenge see they 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 call uh, when you banana and all we decide you want to use okay uh, you make a round around that people don't want to do it nowadays the farmers don't want to use weeding side so they, they say automatically now how to so weeders is one we go for any of the small robots in the agriculture we need to bldc model because they are very efficient uh, and they don't need a service if you use go for ac motors or dc motors brushes you have to see we come back to uh, next one which is the uh, sensors we will come to see the input the inputs so we talked about till now i go back and review back what all we learned about we talk about display and that's one output we talked about keyboard which is an input then we talked about relays to activate the power that is two types of relay wheeler that's again output then we talked about valves pulmonary valve which is very important very very important now next comes to input we are not going to co cover all type of sensors i'm just to give a glimpse only to you idea and uh, i would uh, ask uh, now mukund can you explain rtd and uh, uh, what is the temperature temperature measurement sensor what is the yeah. difference please yeah thank you uh, dr sayed uh, yeah now we are here on this uh, uh, slide regarding the temperature sensor now rtd is basically a platinum based uh, temperature sensor it varies the resistance with temperature so once it start we uh, attach it to the heating body the uh, resistance will change and when we say pt 100 it what it means is at 100 0 degree centigrade it will give you 100 ohms so with all the coefficients and everything calculated at 100 degree centigrade the resistance should be around 138.5 ohms so between let us say we want to measure the temperature between 100 and uh, 0 and 100 degree centigrade is very easy similarly we have pt 1000 there what it means is it is 1000 degrees 1000 ohms at 0 degree centigrade <clears throat> now rtd is generally used for a limited temperature range of course we always specify from minus 200 to about 600 to 700 but the non linearity means and you also have your self heating points 
and they are not robust for field use. Now coming to the next type is a thermocouple. Now thermocouple is just two different metals joined together and the effect is it will generate some millivolt at the open end. Now this relationship has already been calculated and we have different types of thermocouples right from B, E, you can see it in the table, you have B, E, K, K and others. And the temperature ranges are also provided. Linearity wise, when we see a thermocouple, thermocouple linearity is fairly, it's fairly linear. So it should not be an issue. At greatest advantage is there is no self-heating problem in a thermocouple, plus it is very robust. Now, the third type, what we have on this page is a thermistor. Now, thermistors are generally non-linear and they can be used in the limited area of application. In fact, the thermistor application is more towards our electronics part where on the transformers or the motors we attach them so that it trips if there is a fault or an error in the temper. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah, Professor, I think you can carry on with this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There is a, we have, we, now we covered about uh, uh, temperature sensors, which are based on resistor, okay? Uh, the thermistor and RTDs, they vary the resistance, depending on the heat. Thermocouple actually, two elements, when you join together, two elements, different elements, when you join together and it's heated, then it generates electricity. That's the principle. Now, there is another type available, which is semiconductor, which means you just give us power supply, 5 volts, and then it will give you output directly in voltage, how much is the temperature. So this is very popularly used LM35. It will go only 0 to 100 degrees Celsius, a little bit more, and you have different variations similar uh, the semiconductor, which can go minus a little bit also. But they are not very good. Uh, for the field purposes. Field purposes, you will not be able to use it because uh, only certain applications you will use. Processing is excellent. This infrared, uh, they are only good. I think this one we know already. In COVID times, we know we use everybody seeing everywhere. They are all working in the infrared. So they sense the heat and it's approximation only. They are not very accurate, uh, but they are approximation, but they're good enough to use short distance. Infrared is used, for example, in furnaces to measure the temperature, very high temperature. You can't go and put anything there. So, but the infrared is, I, I only I see in a plant, you can find a temperature or what, I don't know the application really, but comes. But we have another one temperature measurements, which are uh, uh, very integrated sensors, I will call. They are uh, actually multiple environment sensor. So here you will see uh, this one from Bosch, which can uh, different model names are there. Uh, there are many companies, Sensitron, so many companies are making sensors because why it uh, says temperature, humidity, these are very important for agriculture. I mean, we have to know all types and somebody will come and say me, this one I used, it is not accurate. I mean, a lot of people will tell you, but there are sensors available to meet almost every need that we have. We have to have knowledge. For example, you want to have minus temperature, plus temperature field. For example, this is the sensor which is used in Besa farm. This sensor, this size is only three mm hole, and it has got a temperature, humidity, and as well as atmospheric pressure. Now, accuracy, if people talk about it, according to me, it gives almost like point, it, the data sheet says about 0.1 degrees, but I say 0 0.3, 0 0.5, you take it. And agriculture, most of the time, this is enough. You want to sense it more accurate, go for thermocouple, it will give more accuracy to you. Now, this is also another one, a low cost type, uh, which very, very low cost type which gives you temperature and humidity. You Google anything, uh, you'll find all these things. And you know the advantage? These two people, all these guys, they use that I square C and SPI. I told you the nearby bus, near my, I mean, my, from my lab, it is the nearest storeroom, local bus, local bus. So very easy to connect multiple devices in a small board, you can use it. Don't think one computer will do all the job. No, for example, I. I, I, one example I tell you, for ATM rooms, I, I make a device which will uh, save the energy. Okay, we, we, we talk about 50% energy is saved. Electricity bill reduced by 50%. There I use four microcontrollers. 
So they also measure temperature, humidity. Turn off the air conditioner, turn on the air conditioner. I also sense whether the person is present or not. When the person is not present, then different algorithms go through. Example, what I'm telling is there are four microcontrollers. In an automobile, you'll find somewhere about 25, 30 microcontrollers. So agricultural engineers don't think is limited. The microcontroller costs 100, 100 rupees. One of the best ones, I would say about the price, uh, pricing in 500. So anything you design cannot be more than difficult to become several thousand rupees total cost. So this is a temperature sensor. We come back to temperature sensor characteristics. So, sorry. Which is good. I think I will change afterwards. Thermistors is 55 to uh, 125 degrees. And uh, this is RTDs, thermocouples, semiconductor, temperature, what is the range it goes, minus 50 to 150. So, and this you can read. I'm not, uh, I think, uh, uh, I would normally say I think knowledge of temperature uh, sensors are important for even uh, whatever level of people we are talking. This is very important. Uh, because it's integral part. Next, we come to the second one, is about uh, gas sensors. So this is uh, another one important. Uh, see, uh, we are talking about uh, LPG, methane, ammonia, oxygen, CO, CO2. I know some places they are trying to CO2 uh, because if you give more carbon, the growth is better, better for a crop and enclosed area. Open area, you cannot put a carbon dioxide carbon, it will go away. Uh, but we have to measure sometimes. And many people want it, even uh, I like yesterday I told, this also wanted to measure the carbon dioxide. These engineers wanted to measure the uh, CO2 level. There are sensors available for most of the gases, most of them. There are not all, I won't say, but I think we have to search. And they're all working very simple technique. Either they give analog output. So if they give analog output, connect to your analog digital converter. So there you have to see the accuracy, resolution of your processor must have minimum 12 bits, which is 4,000 steps you will get. So you want higher, you have to ask him to use a higher resolution. Analog converters available, analog digital, 24 bits available. Okay, 24 bits, very huge number. When you talk about 12 bits is 4,000 steps, 4,096. Then uh, 13 bits is uh, 8,000, 24 bits are available also. The speed will be less. When you go for higher resolution, you won't get so many samples in a second. But mostly in agriculture, we don't require very fast, except in processing applications. Now, we come to the sensors, gas sensors. The principle, uh, at least three principles they are used. Heat, temperature, these are all heat. So you actually, gas, you Gaussian principle, okay? You, the gas is there, it gets burned inside. There's a heater inside, actually. And the fire will not come because you have a gas outside. That's all. This is the most of the CO, LPG, methane, all these very cheap uh, sensors are available. You have electrochemical sensors. This is, for example, a electrochemical. So they can be work for several years only. And then or it depends on also several hours. They give in hours or uh, months or years to use. Then you have to throw it away. You have to buy it because they are electrochemical. And there are some semiconductor sensors also available for that. So this you have to look at the lifetime of the sensor. Then next one is very important. Now we are talking about uh, particulate matter. That is the, uh, this is a very important environmental sensor. People are looking now, at least in the offices everywhere, not in the agriculture stuff. So particulate matter is 2.5 micrometers, uh, whatever micrometer you have. You get sensors, they're quite cheap for this also. Uh, PM10 is quite cheap, you get in the market. Uh, the, they're like these boxes, like this PM10 comes. You can buy a sensor and put amplifier, or this one gives directly output you can connect to your Arduino or Raspberry Pi, what they are talking, you can connect these things directly. And there are a lot of libraries available for this. This also electrochemical, you can directly connect it. They are available for particular. Next, I think we require in uh, uh, some of the sensors, I think uh, in agriculture, when you talk about including processing, I'm covering the dairy also, sensors uh, use the PAR is a light sensor. It did, PARs will work only uh, when the heat sensor, let us say, this was the infrared sensor, okay? So person detection or anything, movement of heat, change of heat. It is a change of heat, not the absolute heat. So change of heat will detect these sensors. They normally work up to three, four meters. You have radar sensor. Uh, is not exactly radar, but I think like I told you in this whole webinar, I will use 
for people to understand rather than technically going so radar sensors also can detect the movement of things you can you can move anything also it can sense is good for example in a conveyor belt or whatever you think you have auto interrupts which are available to you which can measure whether object is coming in the front or not now this all would have studied in some of the colleges so just to recall you uh, i am repeating those things we have uh, next one is interesting is uh, sensors for distance and motion see ultrasonic sensors uh, you see the question is what accuracy we require depending on the ultrasonic sensors are available we, i have used ultrasonic sensors to measure the yamuna water how much is uh, given to delhi is using so for that they want this about 7 8 years back so there are accurate sensors in the speed measurement available from israel we imported that those things they are all ultrasonic so ultrasonic is, this is the cheapest one you have expensive one also this is costing probably few hundred rupees and you have up to few thousand dollars also ultrasonic depending on the height so and the accuracy you want to have they can measure exactly because they work on sound the sound wave sending it and reflection coming it back that's all and ultrasonic is one of the biggest uh, line i think it's a lot of applications we are having on ultrasonic and they are also we can use especially i see it in uh, you want to measure water tank height anything this type of low cost sensors are good enough good enough you want accurate to measure you go for expensive so ultrasonic is very simple it works on reflective principle so it uh, uh, ultrasonic sound is sent and it gives the measure is you have next one is a proximity how whether anything is moving a wheel moving or proximity proximity sensors uh, magnetic type it can be it can be optical type it can be capacitive type so all three so capacitive is is anything you know your know, hand has capacitance anything has capacitance uh, with something water content everything coming inside that is capacitive and you have optical which means anything goes light is passed and then and proximity with uh, uh, magnet you have got a small, small magnetic also it can be work we need uh, to know there are sensors which are used for rotation you want to measure the wheel like tractor car to measure the wheel rotation sensors there you have the magnetic sensors and hall effect hall effect are much more reliable actually you have a magnet this here is a magnet for example called in the front you have one ic there semiconductor ic from there you take the signal so it's very accurate and the hall effect is used uh, for many purposes for current measurements they are used uh, they don't give only uh, uh, for you the speed of movement and uh, the current also they give optical there are many types are there i mean one side is light is passed next side reflective you have or this is conductive you can condu conduct through the hole this is used uh, most of the places any moving items they are used so these are all very cheap techniques i think how to use it is very easy this is something strain gauges and uh, weight measurement this is something i still recall the strain gauges what i used during my studies when i used it, it was really an experience which i can forg never forget in my life that gave the actual um, interest for learning electronics see strain gauges are small like wires like this and uh, on a plastic or, or let us say paper it is embedded so now when you really want to bend you paste it or for example here i show you here there is a hole here this is a piece actually there is a hole made here now here i paste it so now i give the weight on both of here this part and this part there will be a strain here it will move slightly expand or contract it will contract that that strain is measured that's how we are using the pg principle and here you paste it and this is a, using a a bridge you have today load cells are very cheap and you can make uh, no need to make so also can be purchased very cheap so no need to design but there are certain applications you have to use strain gauges you have to make that will come next slide but strain gauge for load cells you get lot of load cells available very cheap affordable this is a challenge again a challenge till now uh, is uh, you measure the actually torque i remember my day when i tried to make the torque sensor for tractor wheels uh, during my work in ait uh, that was a real challenge so you need an axle on the top you have to fix the strain gauges like this uh, and torque sensing is done suppose here you see here 
this is the rod axle which is rotating the center here is a axis which is rotating now the strain gauges are mounted on the axis on the axis so how the signal will come you need a brushes you need brushes clip rings they call them or brushes and this was problem always but i remember in in 1980 i used a capacity pickup okay i had to thank our gajendra singh allowed me to import that so there are radio radio technology you can use capacitive techniques this i'm talking about 80 today a better technology available any torque measurement you can do it fast now it's not a question it is difficult we come back to flow measurement this is another one of the area agriculture is, is really missing the affordable is not there uh, for example there is a turbine may available uh, i remember very first when i uh, did business started business and i made for former rao uh, uh, spraying systems in germany i was supplying that's how this company i started, came to business and uh, they were using the turbine flow sensors only for measuring the sprayer flow quantity very accurate we have to have some algorithm we used and we could give 2000 liters tank the german farmers are funny guys they won't don't want to measure it 1990 they won't agree because it is 2000 liters i fill 2000 how your device shows 1990 it is possible to achieve with this turbines but how you have to be careful in turbine sensors while starting and while stopping it vibrates slightly that you have to remove it so there are techniques available but the problem with the turbine sensors italy was one of the good companies other than italy making the turbine sensors for agricultural purposes they are not cheap either so in india there are no companies available to make it cheaper solution so turbine i think will have still in indian agriculture we need for example irrigation drip irrigation or any uh, precision irrigation uh, uh, we want we have to measure the flow i know besides using an expensive flow meter to measure it Uh, i'll come back to the technology one is i told you right now i'm telling you it's a turbine it is good enough for larger volumes uh, even turbines are used for even petrol and diesel in your vehicles so it is not very inaccurate only question of how you write a program how you understand the particular uh, turbine characteristics how you design it and that there you will get the accuracy now next one we come back to is the uh, ultrasonic ultrasonic is uh, here i give you two types here actually and this ultrasonic is uh, energy is passed ultrasonic signal is passed and and it it gets reflected and comes out this for example uh, now iit mumbai i know they are doing on for a house water meter already 500 meters or in one of my friend is doing for that so house water meter how to measure so uh, i just brief you this ultrasonic sensor is in trials so they use a lora from here device which will in a society for example in a society of building where you have in bombay mumbai and all to find out the water meter readings wireless so you so the question is using ultrasonic and a wireless device so and there are issues uh, problems will come with it but agriculture farm we can use this ultrasonic also but the cost is slightly expensive is expensive than this we have third type which is very accurate mass flow meters what we call or uh, uh, flow meters which is electromagnetic Okay, now compare it to pricing range. If you want to talk turbine, you can make for for example two thousand, three thousand rupees. Ultrasonic ten, fifteen, twenty thousand rupees. This one seventy, eighty thousand rupees. Now, that's about the market rates for the similar comparable uh, size. Approximate, I'm telling, not to hold me on later on. So this is one of the electromagnetic uh, uh, principle. It works. So it measures also the flow accurately. We don't require for the farms actually for research. Everything can use. they are used in big plants and also to measure the uh, flow mass flow not only gas everything coming back to next one we have the uh, pressure measurement this is also very important we have and pressure measurement we have the first uh, uh, air pressure then we have the water pressure see the pressure measurement is uh, two ways we have to measure pressure in agriculture many areas but also we have to remember uh, we we have to we can measure depth also based on atmospheric pressure okay how how deep is the water in the tank water in the well so it's very easy uh, you see like this one device you just put with a cable inside a bore well okay now you have to have that it goes 300 feet down bore well no problem but the water height how much it can measure so that much water pressure 
So it goes on something like starting from 10 meters, 20 meters. What are the technologies available here? So when you use for, uh, this is, this is uh, uh, MEMS sensor, M-E-M-S, MEMS. That's a micro electromechanical system. This is a wonder which happened 10 years probably in the world in electronics. Very, very small. With the capacitors, uh, they make the size of uh, something like five square centimeter size. They make MEMS sensors which can sense this pressure, uh, but height is limited. 10 meters, you can go 20 meters, uh, so 20 bar, 10 bar, 20 bar, you can go, not more. Piece of ceramic, it goes still higher, uh, which are used. And of course, strain gauge is the world ones which use for pressure. We come back to next one, the speed measurement. Speed measurement, we know radar sensors were very expensive before. Uh, uh, for example, tractor you require, any mobile you require, you can use it nowadays. I remember I use a horn antenna uh, from the high frequency into the circuit went there to find out to use for the agriculture purposes. But I think nowadays the technology is quite cheap. You can get probably in uh, less than a thousand rupees, you can make uh, uh, radar sensors available today. And I think forget my pricing, I told approximate in volume pricing, so don't take it as a whole. Then we have also, another one is very important is uh, uh, MEM sensors, what they have done is to measure the acceleration in three axes. Uh, this is a very good, for example, I told animal heat detection, you can use it. You can find anything, vibration comes for battery operated stuff. It will turn off automatically, turn on only when something moves. So these are very, very small. Uh, they, they, what I'm talking about, less than 10 mm by 10 mm size, all this stuff. And they're very cheap, very dirt cheap. They are in your cell phones already. So this is an application anywhere you can use it for the agricultural application. Last one slide I'm going to show you about, sorry. Yeah. Can you open for uh, question and so now? Only five Yeah, minutes. yeah, yeah. There's only one, one, one last one. Yeah. See, GPS, yeah. GPS, uh, uh, I want to know, is a global positioning. Somebody talked about. We have it low cost available for 2.5 meters accuracy we get. And we have the, uh, another one, we have Gagan is the Indian satellite system. GLONASS is the Russian system. Nowadays, they are available. Now, DGPS, AGPS is, uh, will not go detail because people are talking about cracking everywhere. A GGPS, when you go, is the RTKS where you can measure the accuracy is almost in centimeters, five centimeters you can go. But you see the 2.5 meter accuracy is 50% CEP, which means 50% of the data only is 2.5 meter. Within that, rest of them can be more. Now, people have, uh, uh, they think GPS, GPR is the same. Just I want to tell those guys, GPR is with the data to be sent, GPS is similar. Thank you. I think uh, we close. Uh, I close with this one. And uh, Dr. Indramani, you can invite for some questions. Very short question because tomorrow also we'll have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick, please. Very short question. Yeah. Quick. Another shot. Another yeah. shot, please. Yeah, so Syed, uh, one of the areas where sensors, uh, you know, on-site measurement of NPK is really a dire need because soil health is something which people are worried about. So yes. if, if some people uh, can yes, take I, it I, up. I, uh, yes, yes, it is It is already, NPK actually, uh, nitrogen sensors are easy. The basic, basic elements are easy. Uh, they can be done. Uh, and they are having online testing only in Japan. They are trying it out. But... To dynamically test is a problem. Actually, I remember Dr. Singh was telling me 10 years back whether you can make a kit to measure the soil automatically, electronically. Somebody has to work, yes. Next question, uh, uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar, sorry, engineer Dilip Kumar Kushawa, make your question short. Hello? Okay. Uh, hello? Yeah, tell me first, please. Uh, sir, my question is uh, that uh, the microcontroller, which is fitted in Arduino board, uh, Arduino board, and if we purchase separately uh, that mic microcontroller only, is there any difference in that? Yeah, of course. There's, there's no problem. You can use any controller. Uh, the pricing is when you buy the board, maybe 300 rupees you pay. You get other components inside. When you make yourself, the same board will cost you probably 150, 50% of the price. Because the guy who sells needs a profit also. If you buy only the Arduino microcontroller, this is less than 100 rupees. Next question we'll take from question and answer. Uh, uh, there's something question of uh, ICR to fund the institute for this. This I think uh, I'll leave it to concerned people. Uh, 
Pali House, he is talking about soil moisture sensors. Uh, any other sensors are available. Uh, soil moisture sensor is a still an issue. We are all trying to find out a solution. We want you youngsters to work on that. We have got one question I can take from uh, Madhumati, please. Can you ask question, Madhumati? Sangeeta Chopra. I have a question. Please. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes sir. please go ahead. Thank you for a good presentation, sir. My question is about the BLDC motors. So would you know, uh, would you have any idea about any air conditioners or refrigeration systems which have BLDC motors and can be directly run by DC? It is, it is BLDC directly run by DC. Uh, nobody manufacturing don't give. Uh, you have to anyway that much current you must generate. What you're talking right. about the, yeah, well, that much current you have to, where yes. you will generate that much current DC, first of all. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that is a problem. So they don't have, but you can right. buy the boards. Mm -hmm. You can buy the boards, VLDC motors. Motor mm -hmm. also you can get a spare and you connect your own DC source. That is not a problem. Because right. absolutely no problem. Because you, you see solar pumps, mm -hmm. they, yes. they give you both. Even government of India gives in both ways. Either you use a normal induction motor or VLDC motor. Cost That's is almost right. the same. So it's possible. So I will like anybody... Yeah, okay. please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, that is it. Uh, today, actually, uh, it was uh, very good uh, that you covered almost, uh, you know, range of sensors. And uh, I, as I said, that it will continue tomorrow. And friends, tomorrow we are having a presentation on uh, big data and data transfer in digital agriculture using unmanned aircraft system to optimize resources. And the speaker will be Dr. Dinesh Bora, Ganesh Bora, he is associate professor uh, at Mississippi State University, USA. So very good speaker and uh, learned speakers. We will listen to him tomorrow. And uh, after that, we will continue our training session. Thank you for joining today. Uh, I'm told that uh, 95, uh, you know, people, uh, uh, you know, were connected through Zoom, and uh, more than 50 uh, through uh, your uh, Facebook. So thank you. Um, the why why I'm mentioning these numbers that we feel pleased if uh, more and more people are uh, uh, taking advantage. Thank you all. And if uh, Professor Singh want to say something, yes. Professor Gajan Singh Sahib. If not, then uh, we conclude it here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Sonia and Dr. Sayyad. Both. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.